everyone, it's Dr. Joe here, and it's my privilege to give you the rapid fire overview of the amazing research going on uh, in multiple myeloma and specifically key abstracts that were presented at both ASCO, the American Society of Clinical Oncology, and EHA, or the European Hematology Association. In all my years in myeloma, I don't know if we've quite had an ASCO and EHA just like this with so many new clinical trials. And of course, we've had multiple videos to try and help you dive deep into many of these abstracts. But today, Dr. Joe's plan is just to give you the quick overview to get a sense of all the great things that are going on. And I'm going to summarize five key areas very quickly, less than a minute on each of them. Number one, newly diagnosed multiple myeloma, and in particular, in patients that are not planning to go to autologous stem cell transplant. We had two very large phase three trials that had their first readout, and they were the IMRAS study and the BENEFIT study. And both of these studies, interestingly, had the same intervention arm, meaning they had one arm that was the same to each trial, which was using four drugs in patients who are not eligible for transplant up to the age of 80, giving them esetuximab or sarclisa, which is the new uh, CD38 antibody, along with VRD or Velcade Revlimid Dexamethasone versus just Velcade Revlimid and Dexamethasone. That was the IMRAS study. And it showed a really quite impressive after several years of follow-up that patients that got the four drugs compared to the three drugs stayed in remission considerably longer, uh, about 20% higher at, um, at a five-year mark. In the benefit study, it was similar, it was esetuximab VRD, but this time they just compared it to esetuximab RD. So seeing does uh, Velcade add benefit to it? And sure enough, still a little bit earlier on, we see a big difference in the response rate, in particular in MRD negativity rate, which was the uh, primary endpoint here, looking at how deep the responses can be. So what's the take home here? We are almost definitely going to see more therapy given upfront in patients not going to transplant, moving now from typically triplets or three drugs to quadruplets, four drugs, uh, whether it's esetuximab VRD or daratumab VRD, these kinds of combinations will be very common, at least in patients up to the age of 80, and then we can assess thereafter. Area number two, early relapsed multiple myeloma. I can summarize this section by saying Bella is back. What do I mean by that? Bella or Belantamab mafodotin, sometimes called Bella Maf, was a drug that we had approved a few years back and then it was withdrawn by the FDA. It has a unique mechanism. It's what we call an antibody drug conjugate, which means it hooks onto the myeloma cell and it's got a backpack with a toxin that it drops into the cell. And it was withdrawn by the FDA because of one of the earlier studies called the DREAM3 study was not positive. But now we have two more DREAM studies, DREAM7 and DREAM8. And in both of these studies, they're triplets versus triplets, where we saw belantamab added uh, to uh, pomalidomide index in one study versus bortezomib pomalidomide index. Uh, and uh, also uh, compared head to head with daratumumab uh, in one of the DREAMS studies. So in both cases, we were looking at, could, uh, could we see Belantamab performed better than daratumab and performed better than uh, bortezomib. And in both cases, we saw that. And really quite impressive results, actually, um, when, when compared to the other arm. In both cases, the belantamab had a much longer time in remission. Uh, in fact, one of the combinations gave a three-year remission in early relapse, something we've rarely seen before. So uh, I really am excited about the results. We all are. We think that this means that belantamab will almost definitely come back to the clinic over the next year. There are still some issues with this drug. You know, it causes some blurriness of vision. It can affect side effects that way. And we're still working out the details. I think we can do it. Uh, we can mitigate or reduce those side effects when we give the drug less frequently. In these trials, they were giving them a little bit more frequently, but we'll give them less in the future. Area number three was CAR T cell therapy. Wow. Uh, lots going in CAR T cell therapy. Lots of new CARs, uh, fast CARs, uh, different ways of giving CARs. So a lot of different studies there. And in particular, I was interested in a couple of studies that are using CAR T cell therapy now that it's been approved to use earlier in the disease course in patients that have what we sometimes call functionally high-risk disease, meaning they relapse very quickly. And I was very encouraged to see the results 
both with Siltacel and Idacel, with Carvicti and with Abecma, that we can give CAR T earlier on with a lot of success. So I think you're going to see a lot more CAR T cell therapy given even in early relapse, especially in those patients that have high risk disease. Area number four, bispecific antibodies. Wow, lots going on here. New bispecific antibodies, uh, bispecific antibodies given in combination. Uh, and then really what I was particularly interested in is practically how do we give them? And I could summarize this section by saying less is more. Meaning we've learned that we don't have to give teclistamab every week. We can give l every other week. We can give these drugs less frequently after that first uh, several weeks of treatment to get the disease under control, and it reduces the the uh, immune suppression or, or the potential risk of infections, and it also makes it more convenient for patients. We're also looking at lots of studies of seeing how we can reduce the side effects early on, maybe even giving preventative drugs like tocilizumab up front. So lots more to come with bispecifics. Lastly and finally, I'm, I'm going to close off number five topic, is the sequencing of immunotherapies. Now that we have CAR-T and bispecifics and hopefully antibody drug conjugate belantamab back soon, what's the right order? And I think the answer we're learning from lots of studies is there's no perfect order. It really depends on the patient. But in general, if someone is eligible for CAR-T and a bispecific, we might favor doing the CAR-T first and then the bispecific later as opposed to the reverse, but we're still trying to sort that out. So amazing research, amazing things going on in newly diagnosed myeloma, early relapse, CAR T cell therapy, bispecific antibodies, and the selection of these immunotherapies. Learn a whole lot more at myeloma.org and all of the resources that we provide to you at the IMF. Thanks very much.